So now we're doing the 2012 released free response question number one, part B. Part B says, use the data in the table, here's our table, to evaluate the integral from zero to 20 of W prime of T dt using correct units, interpret the meaning of the integral from zero to 20 of W prime of T dt in the context of this problem. So they're asking us for the integral of a derivative. Now we don't have the derivative up here. We don't have any information at all about W prime. But what we do need to understand is that the integral and the derivative are related to each other. When they're asking us how the derivative and the integral are related, this is a question about the fundamental theorem of calculus. And in fact, uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus uh, talks about the relationship between the integral and the derivative. And if we, if we have an indefinite integral, we're really probably looking at part one of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Since we're looking at a definite integral, that's gonna be the part two of the fundamental theorem of calculus. And that fundamental theorem of calculus uh, part two says that the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to capital F of b minus capital F of a, where uh, capital F is an antiderivative of small f. This is sometimes called the evaluation part of the theorem because it's what allows us to actually do an integral if we actually had a function. When you do an integral and you find an antiderivative, you plug in the top limit and the bottom limit, you subtract them, this is what you're doing. Now our problem here is we don't have a function to get the antiderivative of, but what we're supposed to recognize is that this little f, that's the derivative of big F. And look what they're asking us to do the integral of. They're asking us to do the integral of w prime, which is the derivative of w, and we have information about w. So if we put this integral in terms of the function that we have here, and in fact this, this integral, we can say that the integral from 0 to 20 of w prime of t dt is equal to w of 20 minus w of 0, because W is an antiderivative of W prime, just like capital F is an antiderivative of small f. And the reason that W is an antiderivative of W prime is the simple reason that W prime is the derivative of W. Therefore, W is the antiderivative of W prime. So, now that once we get this interpretation, once we understand what this integral means, then it's easy to get the answer because all I have to do is come up here and say, well, where on my chart is w of zero and w of 20? Well, here's zero and here's w of zero. Here's 20, here's w of 20. So now I can just plug these values, w of 20, that's 71.0, w of zero, that's 55.0, and now I just subtract them. So that's 16, I think. You can check with a calculator if you like, 16.0. Now, normally in uh, our calculus free response, we're gonna express three decimal places. Since this just ends in 16.0, we're fine to just leave it 16.0. If it makes you comfortable, put 16.000, but you're not gonna leave any, lose any points for calling it 16.0. Now, what we've just done is we've evaluated the integral from 0 to 20 of w prime of t dt. It's 16. Now, using correct units, we need to interpret the meaning, just like we did in, in part A. We need to interpret the meaning of this. What does it mean in the context of the problem? Um, well, when I do the integral of the rate of change, what I get is the accumulation. It's the total amount of change. So what I have is the total change or the net change, the net change in W from zero to 20. So that means what I'm really looking at is the net change in the temperature of the water. is 16. 
Now I haven't written a nice complete sentence yet, but I'm still sort of thinking out loud in terms of what does this 16 actually mean? It's the net change in the temperature of the water. And in fact, this is a positive change, so it means there's a net positive change. Now we know for this particular uh, bathtub, since they said that uh, the function is strictly increasing, we know that the temperature is always getting warmer. It doesn't sometimes get warmer and sometimes get cooler. So when we say the net change, that's going to be the same as the total change for this function. But the integral gives you the net change. So uh, what we can, and, and the net change is positive. That means that overall the tub got warmer. We're not surprised uh, by the fact the tub got warmer because it's getting warmer over time, but now we can specifically say that from the time t equals zero to the time t equals 20, the tub got warmer by 16 degrees. So um, we can say um, the interpretation is the temperature of the water in the tub increased by 16.0 degrees Fahrenheit from time t equals zero to time t equals 20. Uh, or you could also, by the way, well, let's put our units here, minutes, zero minutes to 20 minutes. You could also say the temperature in the tub increased by 16 degrees Fahrenheit in the first 20 minutes. Because since our t equals, we went from t equals zero to t equals 20, we can call that the first 20 minutes. So if we look at how we answered the question here, um, we, it says using correct units. So here's our units here. We're talking about a net change now. So the change is just in degrees Fahrenheit and um, it's not per minute because we're talking about the total change over that time. And we have interpreted the meaning. We said it means that the temperature is increasing. Uh, in the context of the problem, in the context of the problem means, again, we referred to the water in the tub. So we went back to what the meaning of the problem is about. So that is our answer, and we've completely answered part B.